Welcome back to our next segment on dimensional analysis. And we're going to now move into a two-step problem. And again, remember, you have to use this dimensional analysis technique that I've been showing you. You can't do this as ratios or as proportionalities or any other. I'm not saying they're not valid mathematical. I'm just saying I want you to learn this technique because eventually it's going to pay off. Now, in this case, the question says you have 9,000 BTUs, British Thermal Units. That's an energy unit. And we want to know how many ergs that is. You don't have to memorize that conversion factor. We're going to go back to that table that we looked at earlier. And you see here that we had BTUs. And that's the only place on this chart I can find BTUs. Unfortunately, it's BTUs to joules, not ergs. So let me find ergs and see what I come up with. And you notice that we've got ergs here, one erg, and that too is related to joules. So we found two conversion factors that have a common link. So that's what we'll get to use in our dimensional analysis. So I want to write those down on that chart. It said that we had one erg was equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7th joules. And the other one was that 1 BTU is equal to 1055 joules. So you always start opposite your question mark. So I'm going to start at BTUs and go to joules. And then I'm going to use this conversion factor to go from joules to ergs. I'm going to set it up the railroad way. You can set it up with parentheses and multiplication. Either of these two methods is perfect, whichever works best for your mind, but not proportionalities, not other math ways of doing this, and certainly not just cranking into your calculator and writing a number down. Remember, all work, that means all setup work. You don't have to show me all the algebra steps, but all setup work has to be shown in order to get any credit. So I'm going to start with my 9,000 BTUs. I'm not going to worry about sig figs till the end. So 9,000 BTUs, it's a single unit. It doesn't have a, a unit down in the bottom, the, the denominator. We'll get to those later. I went to get rid of BTUs, so I put them opposite. It was in the numerator here, so I put it in the denominator there. I'm going to go to joules. Double check. You always want to make sure that your units cancel. Um, that will help you so you won't accidentally flip-flop and end up with, say, BTU squared in this case. Now, my conversion factor tells me that there's 1055 joules for every one BTU. Now, I want to eliminate the joules, so I put them opposite. They were in the numerator. I put them in the denominator. And I want ergs. One erg is 1 times 10 to the minus 7th joules. Really watch your math here. If you're not getting the correct math, you want to make sure that you note that so you can ask me that question. I'll come over and help you with your calculator. Now, I'm going to take 9,000. I'm going to multiply to get my 1050 you know, my 10 by 1055, and then I'm going to take that answer and divide. And remember, every time you divide, you have to hit an equal sign. And I end up with 94950, I'm going to put a decimal point there, times 10 to the 13th ergs. Don't forget those units. And my original value here had five sig figs and so we're going to report our final value to five significant figures now i suggest that you pause the video and try the next question and see if you get the answer so our answer to example 211 is 25.2 feet so give it a shot, pause the video, try it yourself, and then play the video to see how you did. I'm going to cruise on ahead and work that problem. So hopefully that was enough time to pause. Now in this case, I've got a bushel of apples. 
So I have one bushel. And that is going to cost me 2.80 sops. The question is, how many fots? You know, these are funny, but I looked these up once, and believe it or not, most of these are real units, you know, maybe from back in history. So we have fots, and I want to find out how many fots are equal to 2.80 sops. Again, it's more about the process here. As long as I can find conversions, it's okay if we don't really understand what the unit is. So let me go back to our big chart, and let me look through here. There's all sorts of weird ones. You may be familiar with the fur furlongs and fardels and lardos and fleas, and, but we want to be looking at fots. I see a fot there. I don't see any other on the chart. And, oh, I, I'm, I'm wrong. There's a fot right there. Neither of those relate to sops, though. And there's my sops. Okay, so I'm starting with sops, and I've got to find a way to get to fots. Well, the only thing I have there is a way to get to tuz. So I could get at least partial credit if I could convert sops to tuz. I'm still not at vooms, because vooms would get me fots. And I'm not at Beth's because Beth's could get me FOTS, but, but look right below it. Here's TUS, and I could use TUS to get to Beth's, and there we finally have a linking conversion. There's Beth's there, there's Beth's there, and if I do that through a variety of steps, I can get from SOPS to TUS, TUS to Beth's, then Beth's to FOTS. So this is going to be a three-step problem. Let's go back to that in the PowerPoint that we have here and in your notes. And so I had 2.8 SOPs. We just figured you we've got to go from SOPs to TUS. Then we're going to go from TUS to BEFs. And then we can finally get from BEFs to FOTS. And I'm going to go ahead and list those conversion factors that were in the chart so you can see them a little more clearly. Two SOPs equals three TUS. Four baths, this is just bringing forward what was in that chart, was equal to three tuz. And nine fots are equal to two baths. Now, some of you are going to be tempted to take a quick shortcut here because you realize that both of those say three tuz. And you know what? I'd be fine with that, except if you mess it up, then I, it's harder for me to find partial credit for you um, because that means you didn't just mess up one step. It would indicate a two-step mess up and you'd lose more points. And so it's really better to lay it all out to maximize that partial credit and also to make sure you didn't really kind of mess up when you merged those two conversion factors. Just for variety here, I'm going to do it in the long form for you, but remember that shows the math a little bit better. I have 2.80 SOPs. I'm going to multiply it by a conversion factor. I want to get rid of SOPs, and we're going to go to TUS. We've mapped it out already. That map helps us lay out our critical thinking. And there's my conversion factor right here, two SOPs equals three TUS. Since I've set up my SOPs to cancel, all I have to look do is look up there and find the values that will go in that conversion factor. Now I want to get rid of TUS, and I'm going to go to BEFs. So I have TUS and BEFs, my TUS cancel. My conversion tells me to put a four in front of the BEF and a three in front of the tuz. If I stopped my math here, I'd be at Beth's. But I can't stop my math because the question asked me for SOPs and I'd only get partial credit. So I want Beth's in the denominator. Remember, if my unit's in the numerator, to get rid of it, you put it in the denominator. And now I finally am going to get to FOTS. And Beth's cancel, there's nine FOTS equal to two BEFs, and hopefully you got 25.2 FOTS. Now, let me give you an indication of how much credit you would earn for this. You would earn at least 
a point for that conversion, a point for that conversion, point for that conversion. We will typically give a point for units. And then what we'll do is give half for algebra, getting the, you know, plugging it in mathematically into your calculator, and another half a point for significant figures. So this is likely at least a four point question. Now, as teachers, we may all agree to give some sort of a layout worth of points so we can encourage you in your critical thinking. Uh, and we would all agree on that together in pre-AP chemistry. Got to stop with this problem here. That took a little while, but hopefully you're getting the right answers for these. And this is going to seem easier and easier and easier as we move forward. And we're going to now be moving on to much more familiar types of units. Now that we have